Hey everyone, what a wet and miserable day, but we do have some good news. We're here to reveal what we're going to be doing in 2024. In the meantime, we're also at Colonel Sam Smith Park because there's a rare bird here. We're going to try and track that down while we talk, so stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. Okay, if you're new to this channel and you haven't seen us before, just a quick bit of background. In 2023, we did a 250 bird challenge where we tried to see 250 different bird species that year. We completed that in November, about midway through. So we're upping the ante for 2024 and we will tell you about what we're going to do shortly. Okay, so the rare bird we're looking for is an eared grebe. It's still 2023 at the moment, so it wouldn't be a new bird for us because we saw one just outside London quite early in the year. But we'll take a look at it anyway, it's causing quite a stir. Then we'll reveal our plans for 2024, so stay tuned for that. So the eared grebe was last seen at Wimble Point, but we're not seeing it, so we're going to continue down to what's called West Point down this path here. We were told by another birder that he had seen the eared grebe close to the buoy, so we hung around the area for a few moments, but it didn't take long to find it. It was diving quite frequently, but I got some footage of it. Sorry it's not the best, it's because of the rain, I didn't bring my telephoto, and this is just from my phone camera. The eared grebe had been hanging around for a few days, but it's quite rare here, out of its normal range, which is generally kind of west of Lake Superior. At this time of year, the grebe was showing in its faded grey and white plumage. During the summer, they are darker, and they have golden wispy feathers on the side of the head. As I mentioned earlier, we had already seen an eared grebe earlier this year, back in April, in Strathroy near London. Back then, we had some difficulty finding it, because it looks a little similar to the horned grebe, which is much more typically found this far east. I'm going to just flash back to that video from Strathroy for a minute, because back then I showed a nice side-by-side -side comparison of the horned and the eared grebe, so stay tuned for that and we'll be back in a moment. We had some difficulty getting our eyes on the eared grebe. It looks very similar to the much more commonly sighted horned grebe, which has already cropped up a couple of times this weekend. Frustratingly, there were lots of horned grebes swimming around the lagoon. Been no, we just, just got here. Started. Yeah. But eventually, we did find the eared. The primary difference with this male eared grebe compared to the horned is that the golden-coloured ear-like plumage on the side of the head has a more spiky, feathery appearance. The head is more dome-shaped, and the bird's back end is held up a little higher in the water and has a whiter appearance. Okay, Sarah, so shall I just reveal our plans for 2024? Go for it. So as I mentioned, in 2023, we tried to see 250 different bird species. We had a lot of fun with that. We travelled around to new places, and we learned a lot about identifying birds that perhaps we weren't so good at at the start of the year. So in 2024, we're going to try and see 300 different bird species, an extra 50, that's quite a bit of a push for us, so stay tuned to this channel, as of January 1st, 2024, we're going to begin the 300 bird challenge. Let's talk about some of the rules that we'll have and make that clear from the beginning of the challenge. We have five rules that we have to follow for the 300 bird challenge. Are you ready? Rule number one. The challenge runs from January 1st until December 31st and it must be accomplished within that window. Rule number two. Sightings must be within a certain geographic area. Let's dive into that a little deeper for a second. 300 birds would be too many for us to achieve it if it was just in Ontario, so here's what we decided for where we're allowed to count birds. We drew a line like this down the border of Ontario and Manitoba, and straight down the borders of the US states that are south of Ontario. And here's why. 
Well, first, it's a nice straight line, isn't it? But secondly, and definitely more importantly, it corresponds with two flyways or bird migration paths that birds take. There are four main flyways, but the two of interest to us are the Atlantic Flyway and the Mississippi Flyway. The Atlantic Flyway is shown very approximately here by my very rough drawing. And again, in blue, here's a very rough idea of the Mississippi Flyway. Incidentally, these two flyways are approximately west of the Canadian prairies and the US Great Plains, and so our red line roughly borders the prairies and plains biomes that we will avoid, and the northern forest and eastern biomes that we will explore. Okay, so I've just got one quick caveat before we return to the rest of the rules. This map isn't to say that we're going to be able to visit every single state and every single province in our range. If we did that, then obviously we'll smash 300 birds easily, but we're very much constrained by real life. We have family, we both have full-time jobs, so this is a hobby for us. It's one we're passionate about, but it is a hobby. We only get about three weeks vacation from work every year and a few odd days here and there, and our precious weekends. Those are our only opportunities to go birding. We can't go in the week, we can't go wherever we want, whenever we want. We're also not elaborate millionaire birders either. Our travel is definitely going to be restricted by our finances. So we do hope to travel outside of Ontario perhaps a couple of times in 2024 but it will only be a couple maybe three times we'll have to wait and see back to those rules let's blast through the last few of those rule number three we must obtain video or at least a photograph of the bird to show it to you if we see the bird but we don't film it and we don't photograph it we don't get to count it Although that makes it a much tougher challenge for us, we hope that it will make it more entertaining viewing for you. Rule number four, the bird must be wild. Obviously it can't be in a zoo, but it does get a bit more technical than that. To keep it simple, we find that the Clements list, which is the list used by the eBird website, is too strict. For example, they don't count pheasants, even though they're widespread and breed throughout much of North America and they have for years. So we're going to go with the American Birding Association checklist. If this issue comes up, I'll explain it more in detail at the time. One more technical rule. Rule number five, the bird must be a distinct species. During the challenge, we are not counting subspecies. We will also not be counting hybrid species. This most often applies to duck species when they interbreed. As an example, if we see a mallard crossed with a pintail, we'll certainly show it to you and we'll talk about it because it's a really cool sighting, but we won't be counting it as a species because it's not a distinct species, it's two different crossed species. Those are our five rules for the 300 bird challenge. Okay guys, I think that does us for this video. We got the eared grebe, we've told you about our plans, everything's ticked off the list. So anyway, thank you for watching, including all through the year, really appreciate it. Stay tuned to the channel, we'll be back with the 300 bird challenge soon. Thanks for watching, and happy birding. Oh, and stay dry. <laughs>